Buying a new hardware synthesizer is a big decision. It's a lot of money and you should really do your research before spending that kind of money and ask yourself if it's something you need. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about 10 things that you should think about before buying a new synth. And the first question is, of course, do you really need it? Do you need another synth? Maybe you have enough already. Impossible. I sure do. Joking aside, here are some more well thought out things that you should think about. <laughs> Here's an important thing that I've learned. Synths that are more immediate tend to get more use than synths who have a lot of features, but also a lot of menus. Of course, it depends on what you need. If you want something that is very quick and easy to use for sound design, a Minilog XD is almost never wrong. But if you need something for the stage with a ton of presets and bread and butter sounds like pianos and strings, you know, something like the Yamaha Modi X, even though it's super menu heavy and it's cumbersome to program patches on it, you know, it's still the right choice. So it depends on what you need. Think in terms of immediacy. Does the thing do what you want it to do in a kind of immediate way or will it require you to sit and scroll through menus? So immediacy is king. <laughs> It can be really tempting, but don't go out and buy too many large synths. Having a lot of large keyboard synths appeals to only a small fraction of the synth community. And you've probably seen pictures online on Facebook and Instagram with these walls of synthesizers. And you might think, oh, th that's what I need. That's where I'm going. But it might not be right for you. It's definitely gonna take up a ton of space and it's also quite difficult to use multiple keyboard synthesizers at the same time for a hardware synth setup. I mean, how many can you actually be playing at one time together? So if you love the idea of having multiple Jasper's synth stands filled from floor to ceiling with synths, I mean, that's great, more power to you. But if I'm to speak generally, too many keyboard synths can easily take up way too much space and just not get you where you wanna go. Small synth setups are generally better than large ones. But what is a small setup and what is a too large one? I'd say that it relates to your current skill level versus the time that you have at hand. A large setup requires a lot more knowledge and a lot more time to get working. So make sure that you don't aim at creating a too large setup for your needs, your current skill level and the time that you have to invest into this hobby. I mean, if you're only having a few hours of the work, have something small and immediate that you can play with. Don't build this massive huge synth setup just because you've seen it on Instagram. Using your synth setups to jam is the way forward for most people. So using synths for jamming and having fun seems to lead to the best results for most people rather than trying to make like a big setup that is focused on like production, making finished tracks. So I listened to a podcast recently where a pro producer described how she had a small DAW-less hardware synth setup for inspiration and a DAW setup for production. We can learn something from it, that it's okay to have the hardware stuff just set up. It doesn't have to be productive. It doesn't have to lead you anywhere. You just have it because it's inspirational and fun. And then if you actually want to finish your music, take those ideas and you know move them into a DAW environment. Boxes and workstations are great fun. So working with one device at a time is very efficient if you actually want to get some stuff done or simply if you want to learn a device really well. The downside is that when you're working with groove boxes and workstations, chances are that you're just ending up with a bunch of loops. The idea here is take those loops, the stuff that feels nice, record it and just use it in your DAW to create a track from those loops. Sometimes the energy that you capture with the hardware is just hard to replicate inside of a computer. Computer. Groove boxes, workstations, and samplers are fun, but don't buy multiple workstations and groove boxes with overlapping functionality. Some groove boxes work well together, say the Digitact and the Digitone, for example, that's an excellent combo that work really well. But having, for example, an MC707, a Deluge, a Machina Plus together, that just doesn't make a lot of sense as a setup. So try and buy things that complement one another instead of overlapping in functionality. 
This one here is super important, probably my best piece of advice. If your aim is a high music output, hardware synth setup is not the way forward for most people. Hardware is a nice added spice to your DAW setup or a separate setup to have fun with and use for inspiration. But if music output, producing a ton of music is your goal, learning a DAW and sticking with it for a long time and just learning it and learning to use it well, that is the way forward for almost all people who want to be productive in music. If you're just starting out making music or if you're returning after a break, it's good to kind of sort out what your actual goal is. So the goal could be to jam and have fun, and if so, build a small synth setup and just have fun. Replace synths now and then, don't buy too many at once, don't have too many hooked up. Just use a circuit, MPC, Digitact, and one or two hardware synths, and, and you know, that's golden, that's enough. And if you're just starting out learning music production, keep the setup really small. Do a W, a computer, a MIDI keyboard, speakers, and an audio interface. That's all you need to create music in today's day and age. Keep it simple. And if you have more of a synth collector mindset and you want those, you know, stacked Jasper's stands with synths from floor to ceiling, good for you. Embrace that dark side and, and just go with it. And if you're already a pro producer and you just want to add a few more hardware synths, I would look at getting more analog equipment, for example, because usually they have a much nicer interface for creating sounds than many of the digital synthesizers out there. What you're getting out of it can be a little bit more unpredictable and unpredictability is something that is very nice with hardware. Or you could go modular, for example, which will give you a totally different physical experience as opposed to like dragging cables in this like virtual modular world. And if you just want to explore sound and love to decide everything for yourself, just go with Eurorack and be ready to spend a lot of time choosing modules, experimenting and perhaps not making many finished tracks. But that's okay, since it wasn't your goal anyway. <laughs> So what if you already have a bunch of synths and they are not doing it for you? Well, sell your boring synths and buy something else instead that feels fun. Synths are tools. It's fine to buy something and realize it didn't do the trick for you. But don't sell things too fast. Okay, I can already hear some of you groaning. What is it, Bo? Sell or don't sell? What I mean is this. Too many times I get this message from people who bought something and they don't like it. And when they describe their issues with the gear, you quickly realize that it's not the gear that is the problem. I mean, sometimes the gear is the problem, but sometimes it can also be as simple as you not having read the manual or spent enough time with it to know if it's for you or not. For example, I had a friend who reached out, oh, this synth here, it sounds a way that I don't like. And I said, you know, have you actually checked the manual? Because there's actually a setting that changes the sound to something that you're more into. Sell anything that you don't like and don't have fun with, but make sure that you're not selling it because you haven't explored it enough. Hope that makes sense. So before you click off to go and buy another synthesizer, let us all know what your worst synth and music gear purchases have been. What are some of your worst purchasing decisions? What are things you bought that you regret? So be sure to put a comment down in the comment section about that. And a big thank you to all patrons who support this show. If you buy me a cup of coffee every month over on Patreon, that's one way that I can keep doing videos like this here on YouTube. So go and check out patreon.com slash bowbeats. I hope to see you in the next video. Have a great day. Talk to you later.